world and welcome to the 10th episode of What Does This Knob Do? This episode was originally supposed to be the last one with oscillators for VCV Rack. In the meantime, however, a few oscillators have dropped in, which fill another episode. Nevertheless, we will now continue with developers from T to V. Multiwave from Trovasoft is a huge module. With a width of 48 HP, it is definitely one of the widest modules in VCV Rack. It was developed for use with his colleague Multiscope and also has the same dimensions. The Multiwave uses three oscillators, each of which has two separate signal paths. However, both the oscillators and their signal path are identical. So in principle we have a 6 voice digital oscillator. The oscillators are numbered from 1 to 3 and the corresponding voices are always X and Y. Let's start with the inputs, which are all on the left side except for the sync socket. All inputs are intended for control voltage, so CV, and each one is assigned to a knob. Sync makes an exception here as well, because this is not controllable. AMPL stands for amplitude, in principle the volume of an oscillator, but the control range is from minus 10 to plus 10 volts, so the volume maximum is reached at both plus and minus 10 volts. FREC stands for frequency and is therefore intended for frequency modulation, but also as a volt per octave input. The frequency range is from 0 Hz to 20,000 Hz and can be adjusted via an endless controller. If the shift key on the computer keyboard is pressed simultaneously, a coarse detuning is possible, with a control key, a finer one. Phase shifts the waveform of an oscillator or a voice along the x-axis, so that phase effects can be generated even with one oscillator. Offset works similarly, but shifts the signal along the y-axis. Both have a value range of plus minus 10 volts. Each voice can have a different waveform. These are adjusted with wave or VLCV. There are sine, triangle, sawtooth and square waveforms. The AUX controller only works if a signal is present in the corresponding CVIN. Then it inverts the sawtooth wave or influences the pulse width of the square wave. With a CV input signal you have a pulse width modulation. With MOD an amplitude modulation is activated. Also here the value goes from minus 10 to plus 10, so that a negative modulation is also possible. A CV signal can also be connected here. The small button next to the knob determines the type of modulation, but this only works when a CV signal is present. The default setting is digital amplitude modulation. If the white dot lights up, we have a ring modulation in which the amplitude is not modulated evenly. The display in the middle not only shows the currently set values, but also serves for direct input of values. This works for all values except wave and aux. Beside the already mentioned sync input, there is also a sync output, with which the oscillators can be synchronized with each other and also a synchronization loop can be generated. 
Each voice has its own output for the unmodulated signal and for the modulated signal. Each designated as X and X mod or Y and Y mod. According to the description, not everything is implemented yet, which explains, e.g., why the AUX control does not work with every waveform. I hope it will also get a sum output for all voices, because with that you could get a lot more out of this oscillator. Of course, this can be improvised again, but here it takes some effort. In principle, I would also like to see a more compact design, although I think the display and the values displayed are pretty cool. The VDPO of Triggerfish has just arrived in the plugin manager. The abbreviation stands for Vanderpol Oscillator. According to Wikipedia, this is an oscillatory system with non-linear damping and self-excitation. For small amplitudes, the damping is negative, the amplitude is increased. Above a certain threshold value of the amplitude, the damping becomes positive, the system stabilizes and changes into a limit cycle. The developer specifies the whole thing on his GitHub site. While it can self-oscillate, best results are obtained by feeding it another oscillator at the input and playing with the self-frequence, damping and input level to go from harmonic to inharmonic and chaotic. In practice, the self-freq controller controls the natural frequency of the oscillator. For this purpose, an input socket, including attenuator, is also available, so that frequency modulation via CV is also possible. The frequency range is from 2.9 Hz with fully open damping to 4410 Hz damping closed. Damping controls the non-linear damping of the oscillator. This influences both the tuning and the harmonic and inharmonic content of the output waveform. The further the damping is turned on, the lower the frequency becomes. A slight damping is also available for the initialized setting. If you want to switch off the damping completely, the corresponding control must be at the left stop. In this position we have a sine wave which slowly becomes a kind of smooth square wave by turning the controller clockwise. There is also a CV socket and a controller for damping. However, this is an attenuator that outputs modulation in the middle position zero and negative values rotated to the left and positive values rotated to the right. The level slider determines the volume of the module and the in slider how much the input signal is added at the input in the self oscillation. Because of the complex real time calculation, this oscillator needs a lot of CPU and you certainly have to invest a lot of time to get to know its possibilities. And here comes Dexter from Valley. And I have to admit, he's still a little scary, although he won me a very cool patch contest. And I'm sure I'm just going to scratch the surface here, so I refer you to the excellent tutorials by Andrew Mercer and Omri Cohn. As always, you can find the links under the video. Dexter also has a great manual. Dexter's not easy to put in a pigeonhole, 
In principle, it is of course an FM oscillator with four operators, but it also offers wavetables, phase distortion and numerous sync options, not to mention the modulation possibilities via CV. Almost everything is also controllable with CV. Ok, we're approaching this monster carefully through the master controls. All settings in this area affect, more or less, the entire module. The most important thing in an FM module is the interconnection of the operators. Each operator can be regarded as an oscillator and their interconnection or mutual influence is called an algorithm. In Dexter, an algorithm describes how each operator modulates and synchronizes another operator and to which output its signal is sent. If you use a dedicated FM oscillator, such as the already introduced FMOP from Bog Audio, you can assemble these algorithms yourself with any number of operators. The best known FM synthesizer Yamaha DX7 had 6 operators and 32 algorithms. Dexter offers 23 algorithms with its 4 operators, where 12 of these algorithms are common for both voices A and B and the remaining 11 algorithms are assigned either A or B which allows independent tones from each voice. The algorithms also determine the synchronization source for each operator, which operators are synchronized with their parent operator by default. This can be changed to neighbor in the context menu, which synchronizes an operator with its right neighbor in the module, i.e. 1 to 2, 2 to 3 and 3 to 4. The algorithms are selected with the ELGO button and are shown below as a scheme. The operators are represented as squares of 1 to 4. Lines show how they are connected and the letters A and B show which operator goes to which output. Operator 4 is always shown in orange, which symbolizes that it can modulate itself. The strength of this feedback can be adjusted by the large orange control FB or controlled by CV, whereby the small orange control FB is responsible for this. I have to emphasize the color design of Dexter at this point because this ensures that you can quickly find your way around despite all the complexity. The user manual also contains a numbered diagram of all implemented algorithms which simplifies the selection of a specific algorithm enormously. Unfortunately, no numbers are assigned to the algorithms on the module. Below the graph you can see two buttons. With LFO, all operators of voice A are set to function as LFO. And with reset phase, the phase of all operators is reset, so that they start their cycle again at the same time. Finally, each voice has its own volt per octave input. If only one of the inputs is occupied, an input signal can of course only be processed here. The other voice behaves like any oscillator without an input signal and generates the selected keynote. This keynote can be set separately for both voices. Both voices have initialized the fundamental C4 and can be detuned with octave in steps of plus minus 3 octaves. The current octave is also displayed by number. Great! With cores, an octave can be steplessly detuned by plus minus 1 octave. And again by plus minus 10 cent with fine. 
Voice A can also create chords with up to six notes plus two unison modes with five or seven notes. The chords are selected with a chord slider and the chord name is also displayed. The chord notes can be inverted several times with an invert slider. By default, if the chords are longer than four notes, notes can be inverted by one octave or completely inverted so that they are behind the last note of the chord. The notes in the chord can be detuned if some voices sharper and others flatter are tuned. The detune control goes quite deep, which means that some chords are completely transformed. If both outputs, AL and AR, are used for the output signal of voice A, the result is stereo and the notes of the chord are distributed between the two. To prevent unwanted distortion, the output signal becomes quieter and quieter depending on the number of notes in the chord. All chord parameters can also be controlled via CV and this can also be set with the associated attenuators. The manual also contains a table of the possible chords and their structure. We will see the function of the shape slider in detail in the operators. Here a global setting is made. The bright slider adds high frequencies clockwise and reduces the number of frequencies when turned counterclockwise. In the middle position this controller is neutral. I already discussed the FB controller earlier. These functions can also be controlled via CV and these inputs also have an attenuator. In the area of master controls we also have the outputs. By default, A is the main output, but this can be changed via the context menu. As already mentioned, voice A has a right and left output for a stereo signal. As always, the left output is also configured as a mono output. Voice B also has a mono output and each operator has its own output. So everything you could wish for because each operator can also be controlled individually in volume. Ok, take a quick breather before we proceed with the operators. These are absolutely identical in design. Operator 4 can also modulate itself, but the setting for this is not made in the operator itself, but via the orange knobs. The most important settings are not visible at first glance. To access it, you have to click on the button next to the gear symbol. This will light up red to indicate that the wavetable menu is now active. The wavetable button also lights red. The wavetable opal is set by default. Dexter provides 35 different wavetables and the description can be found in the manual. The wavetable is selected using the blue table knob under which the name of the currently set wavetable can also be read. The two drop-down fields under sync mode and shape mode refer to the wavetable. In principle, a wavetable is a series of several waveforms. Usually, related waveforms are used or at least waveforms for which you have a common term, such as BASIC, which contains the standard waveform sine, triangle, sawtooth and square plus pulse width modulation. The waveforms are read one after the other at a set speed and used by the operator as the basic sound. You can manually select a waveform within a wavetable using the large purple wave slider in the normal operator menu. 
or using a CV signal at the wave inputs and the small purple knobs. Sync mode is responsible for this speed. 15 different synchronization options are available. The classic hard sync is preset, in which the reading speed corresponds exactly to the set frequency. There is also a table in the operating instructions on the modes available for this purpose. Reading is done with a so-called read phaser and in principle this is done continuously and can be displayed as a ramp, i.e. a very flat rising sawtooth. However, shape mode changes the nature of this ramp. The default setting here is bent, which bends the ramp so that the first half of the wavetable is read faster, due to gradient, than the second half, due to slope. By the way, I find it quite helpful to visualize the whole thing in order to be able to better explain the behavior of the read phaser. With the large red shape slider in the normal operator menu, the amount of deformation can be adjusted. In band mode, this means how much the ramp deflects and thus the ratio between the reading speed of the first and second half of the ramp. 12 different shape modes are available and I recommend to have a look at the manual which explains all 12. In the wavetable menu, we also see the buttons Mod 1 and 2 and Mod 3 and 4, which are assigned to the four ochre colored free attenuators Mod 1 to 4. With one click, one selects the two modulators to be processed, which is immediately indicated by a red light. A parameter to be modulated can be selected next to each mod by means of a drop-down field. 13 different parameters are possible. Most of them have no dedicated CV inputs. Let's go back to the normal operator menu. The MUL control multiplies the basic frequency set in the master control section. Its control range is from times 1 8, actually 1 8 of the fundamental frequency, to 24 times the fundamental frequency. The result always remains harmonious if you want an inharmonic sound image to create metallic sounds, for example, this is possible with the coarse and fine controls, which work exactly as in the master control section. I already mentioned the controls wave and shape, and with level the volume of the operator is determined or controlled by CV. The pre-fade button ensures that the output signal of the individual output of the respective oscillator is independent from the level button. If the mode post shape is active, the frequency modulation takes place only after processing the read phaser with a shape control. By default, the read phaser reads the FM modulated wavetable. With sync, the operators are synchronized with each other, whereby the weak button causes the synchronization does not take place over the entire cycle of the signal, but only in the first quarter. And the LFO button turns the operator into an LFO. The lower half of an operator is reserved for CV inputs and the associated attenuators. As you can clearly see from the colors, pitch, wave, shape and level can be modulated by several controllers simultaneously. Take a deep breath, Dex is overwhelming. No matter if sound diversity or modulation possibilities, Dexter is unique and in my opinion plays in its own league. I can't even begin to imagine how to come up with such an idea and how to implement it. 
The only thing I would wish is that it needs less CPU. But I have no idea if this is even possible with this variety of possibilities. I take my hat off to Dale Johnson for this masterpiece. And that brings us to Vult. Hello Leonardo! If you look into the oscillator slash VCO section of the plugin manager, you will notice that Vult is also listed with some filters. Representative for all Vult filters, I have here Freak from the Vult Compact series, which contains all Vult filters. In principle, it is quite possible to oscillate filters with resonance themselves, so that they produce a sound even without an input signal. But I wouldn't call them oscillators, because they simply lack the implementation volt per octave. This may not always be relevant, and you can also convert a volt per octave signal to another voltage type, e.g. with rescale from AS. But I have not found a way to reproduce a simple sequencer melody so that it sounds exactly like a real oscillator. So I will discuss the filters as such and not with the oscillators. Because of course, Vult also has extraordinary oscillators. I would like to start with Vesec, which is both freely available and included in the Premium series. However, the two variants do not differ from each other, whereas this is the case with other modules. Vesec consists of two identical oscillators, where oscillator A can modulate oscillator B by frequency modulation FM and amplitude modulation AM, but more about this later. The tune switch defines how the tune control should behave and has three modes. Fine detunes by plus minus one semitone. Coarse detunes steplessly by plus minus one octave. Semi detunes also by plus minus one octave, but in semitone steps. Vesec is tuned to C1 by default and can be tuned with the octave control in the range of plus minus three octaves. Thus the direction is clear. Vesec is primarily predestined for low pitches. With master tune, you can tune the whole module in a range of plus minus one octave. Thus, Vesec goes deep into the cellar and can of course also be used as an LFO. The PW controller controls the pulse width of all waveforms, which means that the wave doubles with a sawtooth and an asymmetry with a triangle. But you have to go into the third octave to make the waveforms look like that. Of course, this should not be a criticism. Vesec calls himself analog oscillator, so the waveforms are not perfect either, and that's a good thing. Pulse, sawtooth, and triangle are available. Both oscillators can be set independently, and the output signal always consists of a mixture of the two. The mixing ratio is adjusted with a mix control with oscillator A at 100% on the far left and oscillator B at the far right. In the middle position, both are involved in the output signal with 50% each. FM is used to set how much the output signal of oscillator A should modulate the frequency of oscillator B. AM is the same only for the amplitude of oscillator B. Sync allows a stepless synchronization of the signal from oscillator B to oscillator A. If the controller is far left, we have no synchronization. If it is far right, we have a perfect synchronization, a hard sync. 
The shaper slider is used to add high frequencies to the mix signal, resulting in distortion. Offset adds a positive or negative voltage to the wave before it enters the shaper, affecting the frequency response, changing the ratio between high and low frequencies. The fade knob, including the two sockets placed on it, is assigned to the gate input and only functions if a gate signal is applied to it. Then fade controls the decay time of an internal envelope, which is output at the output connected to it. An external signal can also be fed in at input X. This can be a modulation signal or any control voltage. The signal output here can be used for both internal and external modulation. The glide parameter also has an output that can be used for further modulation. The intensity of the glide effect, i.e. the combination of tones, ranges from 0, i.e. complete separation, to 100% blurring of the boundaries. It can be used to adjust the gliding to the next tone and there are two modes that can be set using the slider. Always means that the effect is applied to each note and skip gate means that no effect is applied when the volt per octave input signal coincides with the gate input signal. The great feature of VESEC and some other VULT modules is the modulation section. Here we have six inputs for control voltages of any modulators and one attenuator each to adjust the level of modulation. The modulation target can be any parameter of VESEC. To select it, simply click on one of the letters A to F and then move the slider you want to be controlled by CV. Then all that remains is to set the attenuator corresponding to the letter, with both positive and negative modulation values possible. And the desired parameter is controlled by control voltage. Simple and ingenious. And the best thing about VESEC, of course, is the sound, which I would describe as bold analog. This is not a reserved celebrating gentleman, but a real hooligan with dirt under his fingernails and ruffled hair. But also with an irresistible grin, so you have to like him right away. Actually, I should finish this episode here right now. Because what should come now and not completely go down? And that's why Noxious just got here. Optically, Noxious is very similar to VESEC. But Noxious is a digital oscillator and generates its sounds by FM synthesis and phase modulation. And it's part of the paid Volt Premium package but I can highly recommend its acquisition. And it is available in both monophonic and polyphonic. I present here the polyphonic version, since this is identical to the monophonic version, except for the additional voices. The parameters of the module are optically combined as areas. OSC are all settings concerning the main oscillator. FM is the modulator area. Chaos generates random events. Phase is responsible for phase modulation. Mix adds additional sound sources. And Glide adds a portamento. The poly section is of course only available in the polyphonic version. And of course not to forget the ingenious modulation section with the freely configurable CV inputs and attenuators. 
Noxious is also a specialist in low frequencies and therefore its frequency range is identical to Vesic. The tuning range is also identical. Wave controls the even and odd harmonics of the main oscillator. On the far left it generates a square wave signal, on the far right a sawtooth. Harm defines the number of harmonics used by the main oscillator. On the left side only the bass wave is output and thus a sine wave. On the right side the full waveform. This control has a similar effect to a low pass filter. A slider can be used to switch between audio oscillator and LFO operation. The tune switch in the FM area determines how the frequency of the modulator is defined. There are two modes for this. Ratio selects only frequencies that are a multiple of the main oscillator's frequency. The control range is from a half to eight times the main frequency. Free selects any frequency between half and eight times the main frequency. Frac defines the frequency of the modulator. The behavior is influenced by the parameter tune, as seen before. FM sets the level of frequency modulation applied to the main oscillator. Wave defines the wave type used by the modulator. Saw produces a more edgy result that is interesting for aggressive sounds. Sine produces a softer modulation. Ext FM is connected to the FM input jack and controls the influence of the external signal on modulation. The chaos section is used to give the sound random variations. To trigger modulation, a gate signal must be present, otherwise these controls do not affect the sound at all. Spread defines how much the parameters can move after a gate signal. At the maximum level, the parameters can move from minimum to maximum. Settle defines the time that the parameters remain outside the current value. A low setting can help to create percussive sounds by performing a very fast transition. Larger values offer longer transitions. When the maximum is set, the parameters are not reset to the original value but are reset to a new random state by a new gate. All parameters in the phase section influence the phase of the main oscillator. Overtone folds the phase to add overtones, distorting the signal. Body transforms the phase exponentially with both positive and negative values possible resulting in a thinner or richer sound. This makes the sound thinner the further the knob is from the center position. Boost changes the amplitude of the phase, turn to the left it increases, turn to the right it decreases, resulting in a fuller sound on one side and a thinner sound on the other. Feed adds positive feedback to the phase. The sound is a reminiscent of an open resonance control on a filter. In the mix section we can use sub to add a sub oscillator to emphasize the low frequencies. Noise adds white noise. The glide section is the same as VESEC but has no dedicated socket for an external signal. Also the range of freely Configurable CV inputs is like in VESEC. And of course, you can also specify Glide as destination. Like in VESEC, we have a volt per octave input, a gate input, and a master output for the final signal of the entire module. At Noxious, the already mentioned FM input is added. 
The monophonic version would be covered, everything else only refers to the polyphonic version. In the poly section we have three identical voices, all branched off from the main oscillator. Each voice has its own separate output, but with a level control the sound can be mixed through the main output. However, this does not affect the volume of the signal and the output socket of the voice. The additional voices are only active when the output or CV inputs are connected. Each voice can be tuned individually according to the setting on the main oscillator slider. Each voice has its own volt per octave input, so different input signals can be used simultaneously. And since each voice also has its own gate input, several gate signals can be used simultaneously, so that each voice can also react to the KS engine setting at a different time. And how harmful is Noxious? To remain by the analogy, Noxious is dangerous and insidious. He admits that he is dangerous, but while we are preparing for the mace's blow, he has already cut our hamstrings with a sharp stiletto and made us helpless. Okay, that's where the role player in me has gone through, but I think you know what I mean. Pure Distortion Oscillator shines under its name and already tells us what to prepare for. The sound of Noxious, especially in the polyphonic version, does not kill you because we have prepared ourselves for this. But it shows so many and subtle finesse in the interaction of the individual components that I am helpless and do not know how to describe it. Maybe just like this. I've been trying for hours to generate a sound that's just garbage and I didn't succeed. I don't know if Noxious is the best sounding oscillator I know, but it never gets unpleasant and is therefore so dangerous. The addiction therapist in me just called me up and said, you talk like an addict. I think he's right. And that was episode 10, which was extremely subjective and lurid. But sometimes that has to be, and if I can't honestly give my opinion, I don't need to make my videos at all. Maybe you think I should stop, or maybe you have ideas and suggestions, or just want to praise me for my awesome videos. No matter what, let's hear from you. Next week. I continue with filters and in between I am working on an update with the newly added oscillators. This video will appear outside the series entitled Update 1. As always you will find links to the most important websites and also to the developers of the modules presented this time. And not to forget, many thanks to Andrew Belt and all the module developers without whom this would not be possible. That's it from me, have a good time, servus!